Mr. Secretary, um, yesterday, or, or um, forgive me, Friday, uh, Obama said unemployment, uh, fixing unemployment is going to take some time. Um, how do you think such a statement can be justified given uh, the urgency of uh, helping the banks in 2008 and so on, and now um, Middle America is in trouble, um, and the, uh, you know, th there, there doesn't seem to be a real impetus? I, I don't think the administration uh, can simply rely on time to mend the economy. It needs to come up with a set of bold ideas, uh, even if they can't get enacted, uh, that will get jobs back. And the president has got to fight for them to be enacted. Um, I want to ask you a historical question, if, if your analysis of this bears this out. There's a lot of talk about uh, fi you know, fixing the corporate tax rates, uh, th that revenue neutral and lowering the rates and plugging the loopholes. Isn't that very similar to what was done in the Reagan administration? So that, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have this pattern of doing a revenue neutral thing that lowers the tax rate and then the loopholes come back and then, so you keep replugging the loopholes and relowering the corporate yeah. tax rate. There's a tendency in this country uh, with regard to tax reform to continuously close loopholes and lower tax rates and then loopholes open again and then you close those loopholes and you lower the tax rates again on corporations uh, and also on the very rich. Uh, look, uh, the problem over the long term with regard to the budget deficit is very clear and very simple. Number one, you've got medical costs rising very, very fast, baby boomers retiring. Number two, you've got the very rich uh, who are paying a sm lower and lower rate of taxation as they take in more and more of the national income and wealth. Well, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that there's going to be a long-term budget problem. But that is all different from the short-term jobs problem. They are not the same. Solving that long-term problem or even making a credible beginning to solve that long-term problem is not going to bring down uh, the rate of unemployment. Uh, government has got to you know, number one, exempt the first $20,000 of income from the payroll tax for a year. Uh, number two, uh, give people the opportunity to declare bankruptcy on their primary residence so they can reorganize their mortgages if they are in distress and give them more bargaining power. That gives them more bargaining power with their mortgage lenders. Uh, number three, a WPA. Uh, a con civilian conservation corps, some sort of a program to hire the long-term unemployed. Uh, and we could go on. There are many things that could be done. And I think the president has got to put them on the table and fight for them. And, and yet the administration isn't doing that. What, is that simply because of money in politics? They're getting so much money from Wall Street. Is it because a labor has, hasn't gotten, you know, hasn't been as vibrant as the CIO I, I, was during the Great Depression and so on? Why, why, I, why is that not happening? I honestly think uh, that the president uh, figures that nothing can be enacted through this Republican House and given the numbers of Republican senators and the only thing he needs to do or can do uh, is uh, work around the margins uh, where he can get some agreement. Uh, but that leaves out, it seems to me, the possibility of energizing and mobilizing the public around some very simple, bold steps to get jobs back and forcing the Republicans' hand. I mean, that's what, you know, pardon me, but that's what leadership is all about. But, I mean, didn't the administration sort of paint, paint itself into this corner with this Republican House by not taking more vibrant steps when they first got into office? Uh, the administration deserves a great deal of credit for making sure that the Great Recession didn't turn into another Great Depression. Uh, but we're not out of the gravitational pull of the Great Recession. Most Americans are still seeing their wages drop, their housing values drop. Uh, most Americans are still in danger of losing their jobs, and so they're not spending. And if they're not spending, businesses are not going to create new jobs. That's where government comes in. I mean, we've known for 75 years, this is not new, that when consumers and the private sector cannot and will not spend enough, government has got to be the spender of last resort. Uh, and, uh, you know, it defies logic, it defies reason uh, to say, well, if, you, if we just get public spending down, we're going to create jobs. That's not true. You were, of course, in the Clinton administration. Um, uh, you weren't in charge of it, but uh, they, they deregulated Wall Street. Don't, don't a lot of the current problems uh, stem from decisions that were made in the 90s? Oh, uh, listen, undoubtedly, uh, getting rid of Glass-Steagall, uh, in the late 1990s, uh, failing to regulate uh, derivatives, 
there were mistakes being made in the late 1990s uh, in the Clinton administration, undoubtedly. But with regard to jobs, uh, Bill Clinton presided over the largest job recovery we've ever had, 22 million net new jobs. And we saw the economy expand, not just for the rich, but for everyone. One of the deep structural problems in the economy now, and we've seen this really since uh, at least 2000, is that most Americans are not gaining uh, from economic growth. Median wages adjusted for inflation are dropping. Uh, you saw that even before the Great Recession. So there is not enough purchasing power in the great American middle class uh, to get us out of the gravitational pull of the Great Recession. Uh, wasn't a lot of that growth illusionary? People holding down more than one job, people going to credit card debt. Uh, wages have been stagnant since the 1970s. Uh, some, uh, certainly the growth, uh, the so-called recovery after 2000 was a uh, kind of illusory uh, recovery because so much of it was based upon people going deeper and deeper into debt. It was not based on people getting fatter paychecks or people doing better. Uh, in the 1990s, some of the 22 million net new jobs that were created uh, were a matter of double counting. Some people did get, have to take two or three jobs, but by and large, the median wage, and that's the way you measure overall economic well-being rose, and it rose in ways that actually generated growth in wages for the bottom fifth as well as the top. We haven't seen that since then, and uh, this is one of the fundamental problems we're dealing with. Uh, but right now, given that the economy is sputtering, given that the recovery is, uh, for all intents and purposes, stalling, uh, there's got to be bold action out of Washington. And the silence, frankly, is deafening. One last question. You, you said uh, leadership is necessary. And by that, you meant the Obama administration. But let me go back, let me go back to my question. Isn't, you know, th there's the famous thing with um, uh, Roosevelt dealing with a, a labor leader, I think, and saying, you know, giving him his list of, you know, what, the, what they wanted, and Roosevelt's go out there and make me do yes, it. Yes, absolutely. Is, isn't there a lack of any impetus in labor to, to go out there and make the administration uh, do Well, uh, look, I, I wish uh, labor unions and other groups uh, were more powerful in terms of pushing the administration toward a jobs program. Uh, people who are unemployed, 13 and a half million people who are unemployed in this country, and if you add in people who are dis too discouraged to look for work, it's close to 14 million. Uh, they don't have much political power. There is no national association of unemployed people in this country. They don't lobby. Uh, they don't have, they don't make political contributions. Uh, they are not well organized. Uh, you know, Washington and New York are existing in an echo chamber right now that is unrelated to where the rest of the country is. Uh, you read the major uh, newspapers of this country, how much news is there about the economic anguish that most Americans are now suffering? Almost none. Uh, it's as if it's not going on. Uh, and that's what worries me. I mean, I, uh, you know, uh, out of this kind of economic frustration, anxiety, and desperation shared by so many millions and millions of Americans, uh, comes a, a deep cynicism about the capacity of government, about the capacity of any institution uh, to work. Uh, and out of that cynicism uh, comes demagoguery. I mean, we have uh, people saying things now, running for president, who uh, make no sense. I mean, to talk right now about giving tax breaks to corporations when they're sitting on $1.9 trillion uh, of cash they don't know what to do with uh, is illogical. It defies logic. Uh, this is a demand side problem. Consumers can't and won't spend because they are absolutely strapped. Thanks.